Hello everyone, my name is Bradley Sward. This video today is the solution for day two of the Advent of Code 2023 competition. This problem is called Cube Conundrum, and I solved everything using the Python programming language. So what are we actually trying to do in this problem? So uh, let's just take a look at our data set here. There's a lot of uh, processing that's going to be going on here to reduce down to getting what we need out of this thing. And so you can see there's basically a, a game, which is a series of games. It's like this is a game, and this is basically a sub-game. And basically what you're trying to do here in part one is look at each game and go, could I play all of the sub-games if I only had 12 red cubes, 13 green cubes, and 14 blue cubes inside of there? And for here you would go... For number one, the answer is yes, because all these numbers are less than 12, 13, 14, respectively. Same for number two. Uh, number three doesn't work for you here because there's this, you pulled 20 red out, and there's only uh, 12 red cubes to pull from. So yes, uh, game three will not work in this situation. Same with game four, because there's 15 blue, and there's more. that's more than the number of blue that we're talking about. And game five works out for us. So that's why they say that 1, 2, plus 5 gets us the 8. So we're basically figuring out which games are possible with 12 red cubes, 13 green cubes, and 14 uh, blue cubes, uh, and then sum their game totals together. So again, there's going to be a lot of file processing going on here before we even get to anything else. Uh, so let's take a look at that for part 1, and then we'll move on to part 2. So for this whole thing, I used a dictionary to maintain the red, the green, and the blue. And I set everything up to zero to start with for every iteration through this uh, because it's possible that you don't have uh, red or green or blue. They don't actually tell you if there's zero in there. They just leave everything empty. So it could crash on you if you don't kind of set everything up ahead of time. Uh, so again, I'm keeping track of the total as I go. Uh, I don't think I actually need the data here. I could probably get rid of this right here. That's fine. Uh, but anyway, just to continue on here, just to say, so for every line in the file, let's just start and just start with nothing. Just say, like, how many red, how many green, how many blue, that's all good. And then um, and then to say here, let's get the game ID number. So this is where things get really interesting, right? So looking at the data set, looking at any of the numbers, first thing I need to do is basically separate this thing and say, okay, separate by semicolon and then I just need to get the left hand side of this and then I need to get the one out of this so I need to split by the colon and then I need to split by the space and then I gotta get the first element one out of that thing so that's where it's like okay let's strip let's split it by semicolon get the left hand side split it by space and then get the right hand side and that will get me the game ID for this particular line and then now I need the subgames of this. And so now I can say, give me the right hand side of this thing that uh, when I split by the semicolon or by the colon. And then now let's split by semicolons to get all of the individual subgames out of this thing. So there's you know, one or two or three subgames that are listed. Um, and then let's go from there as well. So then I'm going to say for every subgame, let's split that now by by, by comma. Because I say, okay, now it, now I'm going to say here is a subgame. And then here is another subgame, and here is another subgame. So I want to get each of these things individually, and now I'm going to separate them by commas, and then I'm going to take each individual one, separate that by the spaces, and then now I'll have each individual element that I'm going to be putting into the dictionary. And that's what's going on here. I split by the split by the comma, and then I go, okay, split by space. So then for each individual part of each individual subgame. I get all of that, and then I set up, and I basically take, and I say, get me the number, you know, basically, because everything still is a string, so I have to convert that into a number and an integer value, and then I put that into, that's the, you know, that's the value here, and the key is whatever the string is, so it's like, oh, red, or there's five red, and I go, well, I'm going to put into red, the item, the, uh, the key, I'm going to put the value five or I'm going to put whatever, two blue, or whatever, or six red, or four blue, or four green, or whatever that ends up being. I'm going to do that for each of the three, or one or two or three individual parts of that individual subgame. And then basically here I'm saying, okay, if this subgame is impossible, then, then either the number of reds is greater than 12, or the number of greens is greater than 13, or the number of blues is greater than 14. And if that is, if that is true, then we have a game that's, that's broken. 
and we say, okay, we this this is no longer a correct game. Let's set this uh, this flag to false and break out of this uh, this loop altogether because there's no reason to process anymore. But if you go through this and you and you basically go through every subgame and you do not find a subgame that is broken or doesn't work for the the constraints of the problem, I have to confide in the fact that it is a correct game. And then in this case, I print the thing out. Uh, but then I go, I add that total to everything here. And just to say solution to part one, comma. And now if I run this the way it is, and I've just run through every line in the file the same way, at least with my data set, I get the number 2,720. And in my case here, that ends up with the value for part one. So there you go. That's how I did part one. So now let's take a look at part two. Okay, so here's part two. So now the 12, 13, 14 numbers don't play any effect in this anymore. We don't care about this 12, the, you know, 12 blues and 12 reds and 13 greens or 14 blues. We don't care anymore if a number is or if a, a game is valid or not based on those constraints. This is a completely new constraint. So basically this is asking if I go through each of the games, what is the maximum number of blues, what is the maximum number of reds, and what is the maximum number of greens that were found in each of the subgames combined, or however you want to think of it. So it's, it's basically saying that in this one here, there's four red, because that's the largest number of red that you see. And there are, let's see, three, uh, three blue. Nope, I'm, I'm missing it. Where is it? Six blue here. So that's the largest number of blue. And then the largest number of green is two, because you can see that in two places. And once you have those three maximum numbers, you multiply those together, and then you get yourself for what you know, whatever that number for each individual game, and you sum up the hundred or two hundred or whatever your data set allows for uh, allows you to do. And when you sum all those numbers up, you better get the right answer. In this case, it's twenty two eighty six based on this data set. But coming back to my data set a second time here, uh, the, you know, completely different about a uh, different bunch of things here. So you can kind of, can I, I can't drag and make this two-parter here just to kind of see the differences here. But this time around, uh, the total is, is, is much different, or is, is a little bit different here. I got rid of all that extra code that I needed to maintain, is the game valid or not? But instead of uh, setting things up and just setting the red to six or red to green or whatever, basically each time through I go, if I find that it's red, uh, is the value larger the, the is the lar is the value larger than what is currently already in the dictionary and if the answer is no and i need to make the number larger i make the number larger that's what the max function is doing here uh, but basically it's going through token for token and uh, you know call it you know the matching up the key value pairs and just basically maximizing each value for the red and the green and the blue and going through and just basically using the same routine as before i really didn't change very much here but when I get out of this loop this time, now I multiply the three things together, uh, add to the total, and I keep on going here. So solution to part two is will get me the answer of 71,535 with this code. And then, of course, coming back and taking a look one more time, you'll see that that is the answer to my question. So just to come back here. So that's everything I have for today's problem. Uh, for me, a lot of the a lot of my time was spent stripping and splitting and doing all of that, just kind of making sure I had the data in the right order and all the numbers and getting them to where they needed to go to kind of get me get myself where it needed to be. So if you have any questions or if you know a better way, I always love to hear it. Uh, we'll see how many people watch this video, but I really do enjoy this advent of advent of code every year, and I hope you do too. And I hope uh, hope I. If you're watching the video, I hope this taught you something, and I hope to learn from you as well. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great day whenever you're reading this or watching this, and uh, we'll see you in future videos. Take care, everyone. See you then.